Hi, thanks for watching. Today we are going to do this gorgeous, gorgeous cupboard here. This until a few days ago was just this colour. It just had one coat of the Annie Sloan Duck Egg Blue, which is here. Uh, what are we going to do with this piece? What we're going to do with this piece is to give it an old Italian cupboard upgrade. Make it look like a beautiful old Italian cupboard with, for example, hand painted, we're going to replica, hand painted flowers which will be kind of down here in these panels. There's going to be lots of texture. We're going to go these kind of blues, this old sort of Orbison blue, the Annie Sloan here, bit of cream, duck egg blue, um, lots of texture, lots of patina, and we're going to make it look like it's old and beautiful. And tune in, because here we go. Thanks for watching. First thing we're going to do to start getting this textured effect that we want so we want it to look really aged gorgeous etc uh, we're getting our texture medium which is the washed and weathered here uh, comes with little bags like this we are going to I will a second. I'm gonna kind of just eyeball it a little bit and just play it by ear so I'm just gonna get my container pour some in Got about this much when they come they do come with little measuring tools okay but <coughs> i'm not much of a measurer so <coughs> excuse me i'm getting the orbison blue i'm just going to pour it in here i'm probably doing about a 50 50 mix and giving it a really nice stir i'm going to do that for all of the colors so I'm going to have the own. I'm going to have a container for the duck egg blue, another one for the cream. They're all going to have the texture medium in them. And I think for the first run of texture, I think that that might be sufficient. So you can see it there. It's very nice. Now I'm going to get started painting. Okay, I'm taking my large Annie Sloan brush holds an enormous amount of paint and I'm going to start in I'm going to start I think in these main parts sort of here around a lot of the edges Okay, I'm going to start up the top here with our Orbison Blue. I've just started a tiny bit. We are just going to sort of cross patch, haphazard. Trying to get lots of nice texture in there. Another way to get um, really fabulous texture in your paint, in your chalk paint, is to keep the lid off your paint for a day or two so it'll go really thick and create really, really fabulous texture for you. So I'm just going to keep going and I'm going to paint this whole piece uh, in the Orbison. Then I'm going to come show you the next bit. Now I'm just going to paint the inner bits here with the duck egg blue. So the duck egg blue I've also I've also mixed with the texture medium. What I'm going to do, so this is quite thick in here. As I lay this down, as I said, I wasn't concerned about not getting it into the other bits of paint. 
All I'm going to do is get a dry brush and as I go along, I'm just going to blend those edges in to the Orbison blue because the Orbison blue is still somewhat wet. That is going to assist us in creating more depth, more patina, etc. Uh, this is not going to be just one straight colour. That is going to be the primary colour, but we need get, to get lots of different shades of colour in there. So I'll keep going. Oops. I'll keep going with the duck egg down here, and you'll see as I'm going along and how I'm blending. Then I'm going to come in with the cream. I'll show you the front here with the cream. Okay, so I'm going to mix the, I've mixed the cream the same. I'm actually going to come in with a chip brush for this. And lots and lots of texture in there. So this will be our first layer. Oops. I'll come in and do the same. And we'll do that all the way along. Okay? So this cream is pretty clean looking compared to the other colours, but obviously we're going to age that a lot. Lots of gorgeous texture in here. You start getting an idea of how these colours are going to work together. So this is the brush that's got the duck egg blue on it. So we'll continue along the whole thing. I'm going to blend that in just a tiny bit. Get the other brush, the dryer brush that we're using to blend in here. Bring you closer and give you a better look so you start getting an idea of what this is going to look like. Okay, certainly not now, we're not nearly finished. But okay, so up close here, you can start getting an idea of where we're going with this. We've got lots of texture from the brush and from the paint. You can see those little bits of blended paint one into the other helps them transition so they're not such a stark transition and we need lots of time and lots of layers after this but we start getting an idea of what those variations of colour are going to look like.
So I'm coming in with the duck egg blue here. Then I'm going to come in with the cream. Again, there's lots and lots of texture in here. We obviously want to blend it into that duck egg blue. So as we're going, we grab another brush. You can use a water mister if you like. Um, I don't find it's overly necessary for this type of painting. We also don't mind You're just going to paint down the whole thing, okay? So keep in mind, we want to keep coming back in here, blending that colour in so it's not a really stark contrast. So again, this is the duck egg blue, which looks really light until you see it next to the cream, of course. Again, I'm quite happy for my colours to get a little bit mottled and mixed up. again Start pulling some of that mottled over here, that mottled paint.
Okay, so now that we've done that, we're going to continue up and do the rest of the piece in the same way. I'm going to show you up close. I'll show you up close. Okay, so this is our one part, like I said, we've just, we've done a quick sort of once over. We've got those three different variations of colour. It's looking all a little bit motley, which we quite like. Which then leads us around to the front. And we're going to continue the whole piece in that same way. We're going to come in just with a rag and... I'm just going to dab okay that gives a really really beautiful effect okay and keep doing that over the whole piece. I'm just going to show you this whole side. <clears throat> so this is after the first pass of the duck egg, the cream and the Orbison down there. Lots of beautiful texture, lots of modelled looking paint, looking really pretty and there you go okay we are taking some chateau gray and some versailles i'm going to mix those up and we're going to paint some in here so this is all dry now just going to pour these into it's probably going to be about a 50 50 mix just going to pour it into here This paint is really nice and thick, which is how I want it. So I've left the top, I left the top off that one, uh, off the Chateau Grey. And I'm going to get the chip brush again and I'm going to take it off.
and look in with some of the duck egg glue. need to get a little bit of fresh Orbison here. I'm just going to keep coming back where okay we're going to keep coming back with this Okay, so we're going to keep doing that and I'm going to put you on high pull-ups now because I'll bore you to tears doing this whole piece. Just coming in with some of the on fleur now up into these little corners and these little bits. I'm going to put it on with a chip brush and then Then I'm going to use a rag here. I'm just going to show you up close. So I'm going to start with tiny little bits like that. Bit of water, mister. We're going to leave those the runs there and I'm going to come in again so I'm adding quite a bit of water now I'm going to do the same on the other side here. So you can see, as I'm adding the water here and then dabbing off, because I've got those other colours underneath as I dab off, it's starting to remove some of this paint. Give it a really dirty, beautiful look. Let me just turn this. Okay, give it a better view. 
because I come in with more water and no more. So as I come in with more water here and all the way down. Because that top layer is wet, I'm going to get my rag really gently. You can see as it starts removing paint, etc. here. I'm going to take it off and show you. So, when it, we've got layers of paint on there and layers of texture. And so as we apply the water, you can see what it starts doing. We're adding some of that paint back on from there and we're removing some of the paint. We are going to do that over the whole piece. I'm probably going to come in here just to remove tiny little bits there and a few more over there. But we want that really aged, dirty look. And if we replicate that on that side, We'll start, start getting the look that we're after. I'm just going to get the same tip brush and a little bit of this graphite. It's a tiny bit of graphite. I'm going to these same little areas and Just a couple of little places here and there.
I'm now just taking some Annie Sloan Primer Red and I'm painting with an artist brush inside the grooves around all of the inserts of the piece on the fronts and on the sides. Now we are going to, we're going to mim mimic some kind of hand painting around the sides of the doors, these panels here. What we've done is we've used as a uh, stencil the, not what I mean, uh, template, <laughs> used as a template, the uh, one of the would you bend, okay, so one of the would you bend thing, and we've created that so this is just acetate we've just uh, drawn around it and then cut it out and these are going to go on either side of those in the cream paints I'm gonna start doing that now Just taking a would you bend now. So we're getting this big, beautiful angel would you bend. It's going to go up the top there. All I've done is put some wood glue, so some wood PVA glue on the back. Just got a heat gun. I'm just going to heat it up so that it's flexible.
Okay, so the Woodie Bend is applied up there. I'm just going to give it a first coat of the Orbison blue here. Okay, so I'm going to start working on this. So I've done the Orbison blue on there. I think it was mixed with a bit of uh, graphite. I've taken some old gold, so the unique options old gold, and some of our antique gold pigment, and I am mixing them together. I think you get a really nice mix, uh, a really nice gold finish when you mix them. Now I just need to find a brush, that'll sort of do. Okay, so I'm just going to mix them here. I might put in a little bit more of that antique gold pigment. Oh my god, I'm a mess. <laughs> I'm very messy. I know. So there we go. So we're getting this kind of finish here. I'm just going to apply it to our little angel. There. I am going to kind of dab it off, but I think um, I'll make it look old. Hey? That's the old gold and the antique gold pigment. Putting a cloth. It is a nice old gold. It is. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah. It almost looks like brass. Like yeah, a, like an egg brass. Yeah. 
Okay. I like it. So we're going to do, we're going to let it dry, do lots more work on it, I think, and uh, we'll start looking at in terms of the whole piece and how it's all coming together. I'm just taking a wash of the Orbison Blue and the Oxford Navy. I've mixed them with quite a bit of water so I've diluted them with water. I'm applying with a damp cloth and then misting with the water bottle and let it spraying down, running down over the piece and then dabbing off with the cloth. Okay, so for the front of these, I want to replicate uh, hand-painted flowers. I'm going to be using the Fanciful Garden here, and which is one of the A1 transfers. This has got eight A1 sheets of flowers that are these type of flowers so there are some other type of flowers which we may or may not use but we definitely want to use these very hand painted looking we're going to arrange those in the center of our doors here and on the sides all you need to do is cut them out I'm going to cut all these out individually but so you just need some scissors. I'm just going to cut like that, leaving some room around the transfer. Once you have done that, then arrange them how you like. So I'm going to arrange these how I like, and then we're going to come back and we're going to transfer them on. So I've cut this one in half. This is actually one stem. I've cut it in half so that I can mirror the other side and bring this inward to be about here. Just pull as you go, so keep using the applicator tool and lift as you apply. And voila, that's it. Then we keep going with our design and off we go. We're just going to make a pretty little posy.
Okay, so I'm going to start working with a couple of glazes now. I'm going to use a patina and the black patina. So a couple of patinas, I should say. Verdigris and the black. I'm going to go in with the black first. I'm just going to start working on this front, just these door bits first. And then we'll get to the rest of it. Uh, there's still more to do up here. But I'm excited to work with these. So these are your unique options. Uh, that's what they look like after. They've seen me for a while. Terrible. But. I'm just going to grab bits of this. And... Oh, there you want that. And a spray bottle. And a rag. Okay, so this is when we get to the finer details. Okay. I'm going to bring you a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing. There we go, so you can see how I'm starting to darken up that area. So I'm just going in these little corners. I don't need to do it evenly. And it's just adding exactly what we want it to add, which is exactly what it's called. Patina. Okay, so this is what we're looking for. I'm just going to wet my brush a little bit more. Keeping in mind that at this point, the chalk paint is still very absorbent. Okay, so it's going to take in a lot of that colour. Okay, I'm going to keep working along at that. Okay, that's what we're going to do in all of the corners, all of these little bits and pieces, little bits around here. We're really going to start working on that detail and I think it's going to look beautiful. I've also come in with an antique patina, so I'm using the black, the antique and little bits of the verdigris over the whole piece, over the front and all of the sides. I'm just taking a really fine sanding pad and rubbing over the transfers here just to give them a really faded look.
and then taking a much more coarse sanding pad and I'm going to go over the whole piece with the whole piece a really faded aged look. I'm taking the black glaze and I'm going over all of the gold parts. So I've painted the antique gold on all of those really big trims on the top and bottom, as well as on the wood you bend to the front and on the legs. And I'm glazing over it with the black glaze. Okay, now we're going to talk wax. So, we've got three waxes here. I've got the dark wax, so the anisine dark wax, the clear wax, dark wax looks like this, and the black wax here. Again, it's the anisone. Generally speaking, when you're doing wax, particularly using the dark wax and the black wax, you would use the clear wax first because the chalk paint is so porous, you would use the clear wax first and then, for example, the dark wax uh, so that you have, you're have you able to move it around a little bit more. Uh, so it's like a buffer underneath. You can move it around, take it away, etc. However, today I want to, particularly around these edges here, I really want this Orbison blue to be dark. Okay, so I really want to play on this beautiful colour and get it a beautiful deep Orbison blue colour. So I'm actually going to use the brown, the dark wax, and then the clear. And I'll show you what I mean. So you're just going to get your wax brush here. And I'm just going to unlock this. Make sure I can play. Okay, so we're going to get these areas here around the edges. You can see how crazy dark that is. And I know that it looks a bit scary, but it's not. Get that and then get your clear wax. I might pop that up there. Then get the clear wax. Over the top. Get a lint free cloth. And you want to remove it like this. So you can see how dark that is getting around there. And that's exactly the kind of finish that we're after. As we move into the middle here, we're going to do the clear and then the dark. But just around these edges is going to be dark and then clear. And that's it. That's how we're going to do the whole thing. Okay, so keep watching. I'm going to go fast forward now. Okay. Okay. 